Hello, my name is Philip Cameron, and we have got a great show for you today. I really feel that God's going to bless you when you learn about camels. Never, ever discard and, and, and diminish destiny when it comes at your doorstep. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you joined us today. This is Daily Faith. I appreciate you joining us on our Daily Faith program. It's important to us that you are there, and we just invite you to ask others to join with you to watch our program. Every week we have a message of faith and hope into your life, and then we expose you to the most amazing mission work we've ever seen in our lives. We have turned orphans into sons and daughters, and then turned those sons and daughters into missionaries that are doing amazing things. And my daughter Melody is joining me as she does normally. Hi. Uh, and we, in fact, I, I was hoping to bring my wife Chrissy with me. We've been here 44 <laughs> years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife just does not like television. She's shy and, and she does most of the work behind the scenes. Um, she collects, she's, a, she's got an anointing to pick, to find bargains. I think it's a Scottish blood that's the thing, Mel. A Scottish blood of female blood, a, a mom blood. I think that's a combination of lots of things. But yeah, she's great at finding some deals. She called the other day. Or she, or she, she wasn't there and she came in the house with bags. I called looking for her. She said, I'll be there in a moment. And she came into the house and she had 170 pajama sets, mm -hmm. all in hangers. Right. I said, where have you been? She said, I've been to Walmart. Someone called, my, my, my daughter-in-law called, or our daughter-in-law called and says, I'm in Walmart. They're selling these pajama sets for a dollar each. And she managed to get 170 sets of pajamas, which to you may not be a big deal, but see to an orphan in an orphanage. That is, in the wintertime, that, that could be the difference between life and death. And my whole living room, she took all the little plastic hangers out, had Ali, my granddaughter, helping her. And so in the middle, I, I hope it's gone by now, but I left <laughs> to come here to do the, the program, and I left, there's a great big tub in the middle of our living room and it was full of little hangers. And I have no idea what she's going to be doing with those, but we she'll could hang. Reason. If she'll you want to buy a hanger, we'll sell you a hanger for a dollar <laughs> each. <laughs> and then the pajamas are free. You never know. Like that phone call comes, and Melody was telling us that you've got a, like a, a, network. a network of friends and some workers in these stores that will call and say, listen, We've got some things coming up for sale, or the winter clothes are on sale right now, or the summer clothes are on sale. And my wife just disappears and comes back with these bags and bags and bags. And, and the, the, the whole point of that thought is that you never know when the phone call comes in your life for destiny. Every day you live, God is looking for an opportunity to intervene and invade your life with destiny. I often think of this when I go back and when I, when I get to heaven and I see all the things I've missed because I've been blinded by worry and care and stress and whatever else. And God has put great opportunities in our path and we just don't see them because of the circumstance we're in. I wish to goodness he had a neon sign that would show up at the bottom of my bed every morning and say, today's a big day, three o'clock, be watching for it never happens that way. You almost kind of fall into destiny. You, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a divine mistake in your life, one of those interventions. I never thought in a million years, 30 years ago, when I went to Romania that I'd be doing what I'm doing today. It was the last thing on my mind. I sang and preached for a living and God blessed me and was on all the major television programs. But a phone call came and interrupted my life and I'm so glad it did. So I just want to encourage you today, be waiting for God's phone call to ring in your heart. There's a story that just blows my mind, one of my favorite stories in the Bible. A young girl called Rebecca. She's one of the young girls of this village, and in the village, that, in all villages in those days, it was the work of the, girl, the young woman, the virgin girls, as they described in the Bible, to go down to the well and fill the water pots up for the next day so when they woke up in the morning they would have water to provide of what they needed for 
And this particular day was just like every other day. She didn't fix her hair up. She didn't, she didn't get all ready. She just went with a pot at the end of the day. I'm sure a heavy water pot, sweating all the way to the well, having no idea that a man was standing there called Eliezer. And he was the, 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 the most trusted servant of one of the fam most famous men in all the world called Abraham. Abraham had a son called Isaac. And Abraham was looking for a wife for his son. And he'd sent Eliezer to go back to where his people came from and find this girl and bring her home. And the Bible says, um, the, the servant took 10 of his master's camels. This is Genesis 24, 10. Then the servant took 10 of his master's camels and departed. For all his master's goods were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, the city of Nahor. And he made his camels kneel down outside the city by a well at evening time. The time when the woman come to draw water. And he said, O oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, here I stand by the well of water. And the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman who I, to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I might drink. And she says, drink. And I also will give your camels a drink. Let her be the one. So Eliezer is standing by the well waiting for the young ladies to come out. And he's going to ask for a drink of water for these young, from these girls. And the one that had the idea, bigger than the, the glass of water, the cup of water that he would get from her, the one that saw beyond him to the camels was going to be the one that would become the bride of Isaac. Destiny, the mother of Israel, is what she ended up becoming. And she goes there with a pitcher on her hip, talking to all the girlfriends that she had, laughing and joking and, and talking with the boys in the village and on the way to the, the well, having no idea that standing there was God's moment, God's appointment to change her life forever. She went to the well. Eliezer comes up and says to her, would you like, can I have a, 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 some water from you? And she goes and she gets water and Eliezer's drinking and as she's standing watching Eliezer, a divine thought comes into her mind. It's not a natural thought because a camel, each camel, will drink 30 gallons of water. And there are 10 camels. 300 gallons of water out of a well. Coming from the well, running over to where the camels were kneeling, there's a water trough. And she pitches... Do you know how many times she's going to go back and forth, get in line again, go down, come back out? It was a ridiculous, a ridiculous offer. But I'm telling you something. When God has your moment and you see it and you do, no matter how crazy it seems, destiny is on the way into your life. And the Bible tells us that she filled, began to water the camels. Camels are ugly things. They bite and they spit. Not the most ple pleasant job. But at the end of the process, she was the one that God had chosen. I want to tell you something. There's no part of your life that's unimportant. Listen to me. There's no part of your life that's unimportant. I'm here today because of the result of a mom in Scotland that made all my heroes preachers. When all my friends in school would speak about soccer players and, and rock guitarists and, and the Beatles, and I grew up in the Beatles era, my mom would tell me about Charles Wesley and John Wesley and Charles Spurgeon and Billy Graham and T.L. Osborne. And she would tell me the most crazy stories about these men that were going into nations and changing nations. And I'd go to school and my pals would talk about the Rolling Stones. And I'd be thinking as a young, I can remember thinking, me thinking, my goodness, all they do is sing silly songs. Do you know what Billy Graham does? She had no concept that what she was doing in the mundane acts of life was turning my heart away from the world and towards the things of God. I'm a granddad now. I got six grandbabies, including two of hers. Every day, ask her. There's never a day that goes by 
that I don't sit with my grandkids and tell them stories of Jesus and talk to them. Because the same influence that my mom was on me, I want to be, I won't live a long life with my grandkids, but I want them to be kissed enough by me now to last them for the rest of their life. I want them to be told I love you so much by me until I'm not here. Because I want them to have my influence in their hearts and in their lives for the rest of time. What you do is not small. What you do is not insignificant. Picking up a, 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 a jar of water from a well is the lowest job you can do until destiny calls. And the moment the destiny interferes in your life, everything changes. She was there. Now listen, this is crazy. She was there running back and forth with that water. Camels spitting at her and, and, and not just not nice animals at all. But every time she poured that water into the trough, she was only inches away from the wealth of Abraham. What she did not know was on those camels was gold and silver and beautiful clothes that she was about to wear and she was about to own because she was being faithful in the mundane things. The key of your life, my friend, is this. Nothing's mundane. Nothing's happenstance. I'll go and pick the kids up from school. You'll say, well, man, that's a waste of time. You drive there, wait in line with all the other ladies, and you've got a number seven on your truck, and you wait and you pick them up, and they come in. But I know what I have. I've got 15 minutes, 15 minutes to get into my, the hearts of my kids. And I'll talk about school. I believe so strongly in the power of recognition. Listen to me. I had Oprah Winfrey say this one time. And it was so powerful. She said, I'd get up and go to school. And my mom, I'd go into the kitchen. And my mom would say, are you going to school with your hair in a mess like that? That dress doesn't fit you properly. Your shoes need cleaning. And Oprah said, my mom, I guess, was trying to be a good mom. But what she was doing with our words was killing who I was. And what she thought was loving and affirming, what I, I heard it is you're ugly and you're fat and, and you're untidy. And I take time. Whenever my kids come in, Melody's got a, a, a son called Blair, a special, unique boy. And every time he comes into my house, I will turn the volume down on my TV set and I'll engage him. Hey, Blair, what are you doing today? Last night, they took him out to um, a restaurant and he came home with a cheeseburger. And I had a whole thing about a cheeseburger and it was upside down. In the, so we turned it around the other way and he says, Granddad, there's cheese on it. And he poured the thing in, in, in half to show me the cheese. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, he's, got, he's just destroyed whatever his mom had, had got to put in a box. Do you know why? Because I want those moments to matter in his life. And the devil will make and lie to you. And I don't know why I'm saying this. This is not what I plan to speak about. But I know someone that is watching. And the devil is telling you that your life is mundane. And it doesn't add up to much. I have good news for you. There are camels on the way in your life. God has a plan that's bigger than yours. And Rebecca went from looking after camels. Started off just getting some water for the family. Then watering camels. Inches away from the wealth of Abraham, one of the richest men in the world. And, and, and Eliezer said, who's your family? And she says, well, my brother's Laban, which means her father must have been dead. And then she says, will you come home? We've got a place for your camels. We've got a place in your cam for your camels. And, and they ended up staying the night. And when Eliezer came into the family, he says, here's why I'm here. My master sent me to find a bride for his son Isaac. And Laban, who means delay, tried to put it off and say, well, she can come later on. No, she says, I'm leaving in the morning. The next morning after she'd watered the camels, Rebecca was on the camel, riding the camel, on the way to meet her husband. And in her was the, the fruit of Israel. I've got news for you. God's got something inside you that has never been born yet. But you'll only find it by being faithful and feeding the camels 
of your life. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you right now to touch my friend watching. I don't know why you caused me to turn this message, this word you'd given me for them today. But someone feels pretty low and mundane in their life. And they don't understand that you are putting divine appointments into their life every day if we'd only open our eyes and see it. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will quicken us and let us hear your voice through the noise of this world. Speak, my Lord. Listen to this. Speak to me. That's the key. Listen to his voice. Speak and I'll be swift to answer thee. That's the key. Speak, my Lord. Is your heart open for him? Speak to me. Thank you, Jesus. Speak and I will answer. Lord, send me. Amen. Listen to his voice. Watch for the moment. And I prophesy this into your life. Camels are on the way. I'll be back in a moment. Full house. It's time for household salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama. 36124. Your highest destiny in life is to see all your family saved. Nothing is more important than household salvation. Just like Rebecca saw the opportunity to put our name in history, you can write your name in history, the history of heaven, that when you get to heaven, all your family will be there with you. This book, I promise you, will change how you see your family. If they're unsaved, they are your inheritance and heritage from God. And I've written the story how God saved our family. If God can save us, I'm telling you now, He can save your whole family. Get it today. I promise you, you will not regret it. You can call the number on your screen, 833-DAILY-FAITH, which is 833-324-5932. And just say, send me the household salvation book. I want you to meet an amazing young girl called Maria. Watch this. Привет, меня зовут Марьяна, я из Украины. У нас шестеро в семье. В 2002 году в нашей семье случилась трагедия. Мой папа с мамой попали в аварию. Папа, к сожалению, не выжил до больницы, но мама выжила, но с большими травмами, сотрясение мозга, ушиб, переломы. За нами смотрела бабушка, мать, мамы. И пока мы с мамой маму не выписали из больницы, мама сама нас растила. 10 лет я уже начала работать, поддерживать семью, помогать маме, помогать родителям. Бывало такое, что мама днями не ела, кормила нас, одевала, работала для блага нам и Три года назад э, моей мамы чуть не стало. Мы отвезли в больницу маму, и пока никто не брался за нее, пока мы с ней приехал доктор тот. И 
э, пока мне приехал доктор, э, она приехала, и я услышала, что она сказала, что если еще бы минуту, то ее бы не стало. Э, очень трудно без мамы, и я молила Бога, чтобы он э, спас ее, он э, оберегал ее, и слава Богу за это. В моей жизни э, много чего случилось, и я через многое прошла, и я очень благодарна Богу, что попала в Орфас Хэнс, и благодаря э, этой организации у меня есть цель добиться в жизни и быть успешной, стремиться к чему-то, э, и всегда побеждать, несмотря ни на что. For 30 years, our ministry has been changing lives, just like you've seen. In Moldova and the Ukraine, orphans and children from unbearably impoverished backgrounds are at risk of being trafficked. Moldova is one of the highest trafficking centers or engines of trafficking in the world. Beautiful young girls. Ukraine is the same. And we have homes that we get them either from, a, from a, a desperate situation like Mariana or from an orphanage. And they'll come to us and we put them back in school and they literally become our, like our kids. I'm not talking about a bowl of rice. I'm talking about living in a house that we provide doctors, dentists, um, school, school fees, all they need in their life, and most importantly, the gospel. And we have homes in Moldova where these young folk come to, young boys and young girls and they hear about Jesus. Right now we're in the process of finishing off Vatra village, which is the most amazing place. They can house up to 90 more people. And you can be a part of this miracle. You can save kids' lives like you've just seen. Each of these houses, please listen to me. We cannot open, these are brand new homes, we cannot open them until we get support. And each of the houses will take 120 people giving a dollar a day. If we can get 120 people from this program, we can open and support another house. Will you pray about being one of those 120? God will honor you. When you care for the poor, the Bible says, God will be nigh unto you in your day of distress. When you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. And I ask you in the name of Jesus, to be a part of this miracle. Melody, you're part of the physical aspect of ministry. You've, you've designed the houses and color coordinate the houses. Tell me how important it is for that dear little girl to have a place to come of safety. Yeah, I mean, she's telling her story about her mom working herself to death to, death. to take care of her. And just uh, the kids in our homes come from all different backgrounds. Some have parents who are alive but can't physically take care of them. Some of them... Just it orphans. doesn't matter how much work they get, they're, they're not able to take care of them. Some don't have parents, but whatever the story is, they need someone, they need someone, like you said, when Blair comes in the room and you turn off the phone, you turn off the TV and, and pay attention to them, they, they need a place that's theirs, a place where they, they're safe, Absolutely. they belong, um, and in so many of these kids don't have that, and Vatra is that for all these hearts. What's amazing when a young girl or boy comes to us and they're an orphan, and what we do is we give them a, they come with what they stand up in, and we give them a whole wardrobe. Yeah. And, and, and instead of having in the orphanage, they just dump the clothes on the floor, and the, the toughest kid go, goes and gets the best clothes. So they never get the, the same clothes twice. And, and if, if they're nervous or afraid, then they just get the dregs of what's left. You should see their faces when they come into the house and we point to their bed and say, that's your bed and this is your wardrobe and this is your chest of drawers and, and they open it and there's their clothes in it that they are responsible to wash and care for. It is a revolutionizing moment. And then we put them back to school and my, my, my motto and theme for everyone is if you are born, God has a plan. God has a plan. You're not a mistake. And these kids end up coming as orphans and then realizing that they're not a mistake and God has a plan and they're a son or a daughter. And then the real crazy miracle happens. 
is when they go out and tell others about Jesus. This is something you need to be a part of. This is a, a ministry to orphans. The closest thing to God's heart is an orphan. Pure religion undefiled is when you care for the widow and the orphan. And your gift and your giving today, helping us continue this ministry, makes all the difference in the world. Could you pray about being a hundred, one of the 120 people to give a dollar a day? Those that do, I'm going to send you this book written by one of our own kids, Dasha. And she tells the story of kids that have been rescued by our ministry. It's called Every 30 Seconds. Because that is how often someone is trafficked in the world today. 833-324-5932. Get that book. We've become part of our miracle. We love you so much. Thank you for watching Daily Faith. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing. They champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the Orphan's Hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1 833 Daily Faith or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama. 36124